Welcome back to Nether Creature Crafts. Today's the Halloween Spooktacular, so let's get into it. Here's one of the first crafts I ever made for d and It's a dice tower made from a Pringles can. It doesn't come without its flaws. As you can see, the dice fly out of it at the velocity of a spark from a firecracker, escaping an indestructible pumpkin. And half the time, it tips over. Let's see if two years of crafting knowledge can improve upon this. We start with a Pringles can for that manufactured in Tennessee feel, and a real skull I found in the woods. I think it's a possum. I clean it by soaking it in hydrogen peroxide for a day, and then bleaching it. Safety first, kids. Gotta make sure it still rolls stuff. First thing we did was kind of cut a corner of the Pringles can off at about a 45 degree angle because I knew I wanted this thing tilted that way. Then I roughly measured how big I wanted the base of this thing to be. I knew I was going to try to go for a cave entrance so we used some foam board and cut that out. After cutting out the base, we beveled the edge at a 45 degree angle, and then we got to work bulking it up. To do that, I used some XPS foam just to kind of build up some of the layers. Make it look like less of a Pringles can. Once I was satisfied with our little bit of buildup, I used some toothpicks and some cheap PVA glue to glue the layers together. Here's a cheap craft brush that's been through its paces. I mainly am just squirting on the glue onto each layer and using the toothpicks to secure them in place. I didn't have clamps and didn't want to wait and waste time weighing them down with books. Next step was to bulk it up some more to make it really look like a mountain, so after a little bit of brainstorming, aluminium foil is what I chose to use. So just taking strips of the aluminum foil and crinkling them up to give them some texture, and a hot glue gun, I just wrapped this bad boy up. And our good friend Sculpt Mold. I've really been enjoying using this stuff. If you haven't seen it in my past videos, I've used it for almost every single one. It's a great little compound like paper mache and plaster mix. And it's really easy to use and it dries hard and it dries relatively quick, which I'm pretty impressed with. So using two parts Sculpt Mold, one part water. We mix that up, put on some gloves. I also add some black paint just to give it some color and slather it all over. This is a pretty messy step, but it's pretty fun too. I put down some parchment paper so I didn't mess up my kitchen table. Mrs. Nether Creature approves. Using some XPS foam, we made some crystals in one of our last videos, so we had some of those extra leftovers. We're gonna use that as a cool little feature on our mountain. And I made these little bridges too, so I knew I kinda wanna incorporate that. The way I made those was just by cutting off the ends of popsicle sticks and later we're going to glue those together and make a bridge. 
I cut way more than I needed, but that's because I know I'll use these in the future as well. Next day we went outside to the garage, used some more XPS foam and our foam cutter. If you don't have a foam cutter, you could definitely just do this with a blade of some sort. But if you are going to use a hot wire foam cutter, always wear a respirator. Breathing in this stuff is not good for you. So here I am just roughly cutting these. I wasn't even trying to do a straight line. In fact, I was intentionally zigging back and forth to give the foam a bit more of a natural texture because this is supposed to look like rock. Later I switched the top of the head of the foam cutter to this weird wiry thing and you can really get a fun little cliff edge, rock-like texture. Here I am showing you, you can do it with a blade as well. It's a lot more messy and time consuming, but it can be done. At one point I took a ball of aluminum foil, rolled it all over the tops of the XPS foam and that's also just going to create some texture. You'll see me digging into it with the X-Acto blade as well. Again just to add texture. And then here I'm using toothpicks and hot glue just to seal the cliff edges to the side of this mountain. Although the sculpt mold dries hard, it's pretty easy to pierce into at this point. We assemble our little bridge real quick just by gluing some popsicle sticks to themselves, tracing out the edge of the mountain where I think it'll fit in, and then just scoring it with a blade a couple times. We also just hot glued that down. Once we had that part satisfied, we went on to doing some more sculpt molds, so we mixed up some more. This is just to blend the rock texture of the XPS foam to the mountain of the rock. Make it a little bit more coherent. It was at this point, I was feeling a little bit better about it. It wasn't looking like the mashed potato scene from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, so it was really coming together for me. After the sculpt mold was dry, we used that green sauce, which is just PVA glue and water, and we went bananas, smearing that all over our cliff face, and adding some fine sand and bigger rocks to add some texture, make it look a little bit more natural. Here I am just playing around with some different ideas on bones I had cut off from like Dollar Tree toys. Uh, this one came from a little Halloween decoration bat. So using some blue tack and seeing where I would place that on the mountain, once I was satisfied with that, I just hot glued it down. If you've been watching my videos for any amount of time, you might have noticed this five minute hourglass I always flip over. I do it for the effect in time lapses, it looks cool. But also, when I'm having creative block, using that hourglass and tipping it over, telling yourself you just gotta find a solution to what you're doing, it really helps me push forward. So here I am using that to not allow myself to take too much time deciding where I wanna put these crystals. To put these crystals down, we are poking holes with uh, the toothpicks again and using hot glue, just like we did before, just to kind of put them where we want. Now on to the bones. I wanted a wall of bones to surround the base of this, that way it kind of traps the dice in when they fly out of the tower. So using some wire cutters, I just cut these pieces of plastic in half. 
and started kind of building a wall of bones a bone wall if you will a wall of bones bone wall yeah, yeah it's it, it's like a wall with bones you get it Before we move on to another creature's favorite part, which is painting, we are going to uh, sculpt a mold again. Lots of sculpt a mold this build. Uh, this one's going to be to tie in the bones to the floor, have some ground cover texture, uh, and overall tie all these random pieces together, mostly focusing on the base. Cool, after the sculpt molds all dry, the next day we are going to do a PVA glue and black paint mixture watered down slightly. Hello craftsman. We are going to just slather that all over and it's really going to help seal the piece together and hopefully give it some longevity. I also just like starting with a black base coat when I paint. So here we are using some texture paints, just two different browns, a light brown and a dark brown. I could have used normal paint for this, but I bought this texture paint a long time ago and honestly just wanted to get rid of it. Um, don't be like me if you're early on in your craft career. Just make your own texture paints. Add some sand and glue to whatever color you want. Bam, texture paint. Don't pay $10 for that jazz. So for the next part, we want to make the cave have like a cold feel. The rocks give them a cold feel, all that jazz. So starting with a purple, a dark blue, and a light blue, working from the bottom to the top the darker parts on the bottom, the lighter parts on the top. We just blend that together, bam, color. Here we are painting the bridge, brown of course. Oh yeah, get that undercarriage. There's one expensive paint I would recommend you use. Uh, I'm a little bit colorblind, so I have trouble mixing colors, but Screamin' Skull by Citadel is a great base coat for any kind of bone. It also makes kind of like a good flesh color if you're painting minis. Uh, pick this one up though, it's a good one. So we're just gonna paint all over all the bones with that. And bam, once we got all the bones done, we're gonna paint the crystals purple. I'm gonna edge highlight those with pink off camera. Uh, don't worry about that though. If you don't know about that, you can check it out in other videos. Honestly, if you've made it this far, you know what to do. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We still got a little bit of this project to go, so hang in there with me until we get to that reveal shot. Looks like Nether Creature had noticed that it was a bit too vibrant, so what he did was he took a dry brush of a dark gray and did it all over the mountain parts. We're gonna do some washes after that to dye down the color a little bit even more and blend it all together. This first wash is Seraphim Sepia, but you could really use any um, watered down like warm brown color over the bone and that's gonna give it like an aged bone feel. I think it looks pretty good. Again, that was Seraphim Sepia. We did that over all the bones after we did the Screaming Skull. And last but not least, we're gonna flock this mofo. So first thing we do is put a bunch of glue all over it, bust out that green sauce, which is just watered down PVA, paint that all over. Then we're gonna use our blended tuft, shake it on. If you watch any of my videos for any amount of time, this is pretty much how I finish all my terrain projects. I definitely plan on doing different weird stuff in the future, like some Mars scenes for Gaslands, uh, some snowy scenes for Frostgrave, and uh, yeah, some sci-fi stuff for Stargrave. I play a bunch of different games. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. On to the reveal. <laughs> 